starting with the first <coughs> chapter of this book, Kitab Al-Tahara. The title is Kitab Al-Tahara Wa Asraruha Wa Salaam Wa Ma Yata'allaku Biha. Right? So, which translates to the chapter of Tahara, purification, and its secrets, and Salah and everything related to it. So the Mu'allif, rahimahullah, he said, وَعْلَمْ and know أَنَّ الطَّهَارَ لَهَا أَرْبَعَ مَرَاتٍ Know that purification has four levels. We should know these four levels. He said, الْأُولَى تَطْهِيرُ الظَّاهِرِ مِنَ الْأَحْدَاثِ وَالْأَنْجَاسِ وَالْفَضَلَاتِ He said the first level is purifying one's body, the outside, he said, الظَّاهِر Right, the outside, the external body from impurity, whether it be spiritual or physical impurities, this, uh, this purification is only the first level. The second level is tathirul jawarihi min al wal asam. The second is purifying the body from doing sin, from doing ma'asi, anything, any sinful behavior, meaning we purify our actions from sinfulness, right? That's the second level. The third is تطهير القلب من الأخلاق المذمومة والرذائل الممقوتة. The third level is purifying the heart from bad manners and from lowly habits. From lowly habits. Purifying the heart from lowly habits. This is the third level of tahara. And the fourth level of tahara تَطْهِيرُ السِّرِّ عَمَّا سِوَى اللَّهِ is purifying the inside of us from anything other than Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Jama'a, this is Al-Jawhar. This is the Asas. I remember there was a shaykh in, in, uh, in 2011, we were in Mina, in the camp. And we were doing Hajj, and I remember a brother was asked to, you know, a brother came to our tent. He said, can you come to our tent and take a group picture of us? I said, of course. Then I went to the camp, and then I, I, uh, I was given a picture, and there was a sheikh sitting down. His name is Sheikh Sami. He said, uh, after I took the picture, I'm like, Sheikh Sami, you're, you're here. Why don't you just take the picture? He's like, Wallahi, I don't, I don't like taking pictures. I told him, Khair, inshallah, Sheikh. I, I want to know. Yani, is there anything that I'm doing that's wrong? He said, La wallah illa anu. He said, My heart can't, I know what my heart can take and what my heart cannot take. He said, Ya Rabb. And I told him, What do you mean, Sheikh? This ilm was new to me. You know, I was still, it was. Back in the day, we're talking about 13 years ago. And he said, he said, it's something between me and my... I said, Sheikh, like, I have a picture of, an old picture of my father, you know, and, and that I keep with me in my wallet. He said, if I were to do something with that picture, like rip it up, or like step on it, or else, how would you feel? I'm like, I'll feel very bad. You know, I'll be infuriated. He said, do you see this love that you have for the picture? I said, yes. He said, I believe only Allah deserves that. That's why I don't take pictures. I said, yeah, Allah. And you know, that sparked something in me. Although, you know, I do, we still, like, we're always taking pictures and selfies and hada. But you know what he said really hit me. He said, I don't believe that this type of love and passion belongs to anything but Allah. Allah deserves all of that. That's in his opinion. Is it a valid opinion? Wallahi. Yeah. But this is the answer of somebody who's been digging into his heart for a long time. He's been finding out what is it that, that you know, that gets his heart up, you know, get, gets him, you know, frustrated, infuriated, makes him happy, makes him comfortable, you know, he's testing himself. And this was one of the things. And that's why we all 
need to embark on this journey and find out what it is that we love more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is it? We can say we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we can act as if we don't love Him. And that's the waqia. Ya jama'ah, when somebody says, oh, I love this person. I love this thing. I love my car. I love, I love my, uh, I love my house. Man, I love that soccer player. Man, I love that basketball player. I love this food. I love this restaurant. I love, I love, I love. Ya jama'ah, where are you loving everything? Love, 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 love. Man, do you even know what love is? Should love be distributed that easily? Should the love of a believer be given to something so lightly? Something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately deserves. No one deserves this love more than Allah. Huwa al-wadud. He's the most loving, the most compassionate. Sah? Who deserves this love? Wallah, it's only Allah. And we know this. Because He is the one that allowed us to love. So loving something not through Him immediately discredits that. Do you get what I'm saying? Is this kind of like over the head? When we love something, we need to love it through Allah, not aside from Allah. We love our house because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to bless us with a house that has this. When He didn't give it to others, but He gave it to me and He gave me he gave me water that, that's, that's running, subhanAllah. None of the, ya jama'ah, the, the, the most beloved servants of Allah, all the prophets of Allah didn't have water that flows like the water in our house. All of them, subhanAllah. All of them didn't have light as easy as we have it. Just switch it on. They had to go and turn on the light, and that in the middle of the night they had to put oil so the fire can continue. Jama'ah. Love has to go through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we want to be believers. And this is what tathiru sirri amman siwa Allah. The fourth level and the most important level is purifying what's inside from anything but Allah. So that if anything goes in here, it has to go through Allah. Subhanallah. And we're, we're going to elaborate on this in a bit. He said, وَهَذَا هُوَ الْغَايَةُ الْقُصْوَى This is the ultimate Strive. This is what we're striving for. فَمَنْ قَوِيَتْ بَصِيرَتُهُ سَمَتْ إِلَى هَذَا الْمَطْلُوبِ Whoever has a strong basira, strong insight, they will strive for the fourth level. وَمَنْ عَمِيَتْ بَصِيرَتُهُ لَمْ يَفْهَمْ مِنَ الْمَرَاتِبِ مِنْ مَرَاتِبِ الطَّهَارَ إِلَّا الْمَرْتَبَ الْأُولَى He said, and whoever's insight is weak, this person will live their life dwelling on the first level, which is what? Purifying the body, that's it. That's all they focus. Hyper focus, all oh, the water, clean, all oh, the this, oh, I need sanitizer. Oh, my, you know, my thobe has to be, oh, it's a little dirty, I gotta go change, I can't, I can't go out like this. I have a coffee stain, I have to be two hours late to work to go home, change my shirt, come back. I can't be seen like that. Me? It's being seen like, astaghfirullah, no, no, no. Can't. Ya jama'ah, I'm telling you, the, the Imam, he then he starts talking about these types of people. He said that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was seen, or it was narrated, that he was seen making wudu from the bucket of water that the Christians used to wash. And it was known at that time that the Christians, they didn't have like the sunnah of our messenger وسلم, which is to pour the water onto the dirt and then wash it before putting your hand inside of the big bucket. You know, so in Islam, Prophet وسلم, forbade us from putting our hand directly into the water, right, before washing our hands. So we'd have to pour water, wash our hands, and then wa- and then, and then uh, you know, then we could do the tahara. But Umar radiallahu anhu, he knew this about the Christians. And he went to the bucket of the Christians that they never washed. They would just put their hands and wash it inside the bucket. And he made wudu with that water. And the Christians would be seen walking with what? 
walking مثلا, barefoot and, and you know, dressed in some like raggedy clothes and they pray on the floor you know, they don't, they don't put something like a sajada or a mat and whatnot you know, and even when they do a stijmar, when they purify themselves you know how we use water to purify ourselves in the bathroom Azzakumullah they would use rocks, they wouldn't use uh, other means right because they want to do يعني خلاص, they chose this roughness he said وَقَدْ انْتَهَ الْأَمْرُ إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ يُسَمُّونَ الرُّعُونَ نَظَافَةِ He said, but now, he said, this is how the people were from Ahlul Kitab. And Umar رضي الله عنه had no issue with them. Yani, perhaps people, if they see people doing this right now, you'll consider them disgusting. Like, yeah, astaghfirullah. Look what they're doing. Look how they're dressed. They're walking barefoot. Disgusting. Right? Use a stijmar instead of... Uh, Water to, to purify yourself? Yeah, I billah, right? I don't do that. He said, he said, but now Al Amr, he said, things have resulted in people thinking that Ru'una, Ru'una is what? What does Ru'una mean for the Arab out here? So we know. Whereas, what does Ru'una mean? No. No. He said they consider uh, being extra, like, no, 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 no. Um, always, uh, is like, like always caring about your appearance. Obsession with appearance and what is apparent, you know? He said, yeah, what's seen on the outside. He said this obsession, they call it cleanliness. So, فَتَرَى أَكْثَرُ زَمَانِهِمْ They spend most of their time يَمْضِي فِي تَزْيِينِ الظَّوَاهِرِ It just passes in decorating their bodies, their clothes. Well, I need to get me, uh, you know, a new pair of shoes. Oh, my pants have to be this. Oh, my shirt has to be ironed. My this. Not that it's, it's wrong to look good. But the majority of the time, the majority of the time is spent in this. That's where the aib is. Where more time is spent on this than actually thinking of the heart. When a person spent more time ironing their shirt than they spent reflecting on the bad deeds that they did. This is the problem. This is what the Imam is talking about here. He said, He said, but inside of them, although they look beautiful, they look amazing. They're tobes, they're this, they're that. They're always, you know, on the outside. But they never took moments to think of their sin or think of the aqibah. Subhanallah. They say, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. Well, I'll, I'll save that till later, inshallah, this story. He said, the inside is mahshuwa bil kibr. He said, arrogance and showing off and ignorance and, and, and nifaq, hypocrisy. Inside, unattended to. Never Wallah focused on this person the majority of the time. The, what he's saying is there are people that spend more time shopping for nice clothes and cleaning themselves and taking showers and, 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 right? Caring about, like, you know, well, I'll wait for a fresh cut. Today I went to the barber shop. Alhamdulillah, it was empty. You know, I just went and sat. Sometimes you go in the barber shop, there's like five people in front of you. You wait for how long? Wait for like an hour, hour and a half. What, for a haircut? Yeah, I got to look fresh. I can't. If I'm not fresh, I just can't live. I don't know. I'm not me if I don't have that shape up, right? You, you, you guys know what I'm saying. But you know, طيب, what about that weight? What if that weight was outside of the masjid from how packed it is so that we can get the reward of praying jama'ah. What if that weight was to see a scholar that's going to teach you a ilm, a knowledge that you can't get from any other place or wisdom that you cannot attain from any other scholar as this scholar is the, you know, the top of his time. Or very rarely would you see this scholar in, in your lifetime, right? Would we wait that long? 
to be worth it? Or is the haircut more worth it? So this is what the Shaykh is talking about here. Said And then they claim that this is cleanliness. Yeah, you know, I like to stay fresh. Alhamdulillah, I like to stay clean. And they switch the manna. He said, he said, فَانظُرْ كَيْفَ جَعَلُوا الْبَذَاذَةَ الَّتِي هِيَ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ قَذَارًا He said, look at how they make simplicity into, uh, into dirtiness. Like they make, when a person lives simple, they make it seem like, oh, this person is uh, he's not clean. Ew. وَالرَّعُونَ نَظَافَ And ra'una, they made it into what? Cleanliness. They called it... Uh, cleanliness. He said, وَصَيَّرُوا الْمُنْكَرَ مَعْرُوفًا وَالْمَعْرُوفُ مُنْكَرًا And they made the munkar into ma'roof and ma'roof into munkar. Right? The munkar into ma'roof. What is good, they made it bad, and what is bad, they made it good. طيب. طيب. Now, he said, وَأَمَّا إِزَالَةُ الْفَضَلَاتِ Now he's talking about tahara. He said, if you want to talk about the first type of tahara, go to any book of fiqh. You can find in detail, okay, what type of water to make wudu in, what kinds of, what, what you start with to make wudu, how ghusl, the different kinds, and, and so on and so forth, right? What cleans the najasa and what doesn't clean the najasa. You could find that in any book of fiqh. We're not talking about that today. We're talking about the level, levels beyond that. He said, وَأَمَّا إِزَالَةُ الْفَضَلَةِ As for this you know, removing unclean things. He said, it's two types. He said, the first type is basically what's inside of you, you know, when we when we want to clean what's inside our hair, what's inside our nose, with our mouth, and so on and so forth. Uh, he said, "Ustahab to brush the teeth, and 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 so on and so forth." He said, so now he's talking about the outside, right? To wash uh, a person's self from from sweat, and and to look good, and anything extra, you know, all the hair and all that. Then a person should always look muhaddab, should look decent, should look presentable. Right? This doesn't mean that a person shouldn't care about themselves. So the Shaykh now he's balancing what he said before, because there's always people that are extreme. Right? There's people, it's, you know extremism is a mindset. It's not like, it's not an ideology. There's people that just take anything to the extreme. You give them the most balanced thing and they make it extreme. Because it's like the mindset. <laughs> you give them the deen, Islam, like it's perfect. And they make extremism out of it. How, how they do it? SubhanAllah. It's just the mindset. Right? So he said, no, a person should always remain clean from uh, the, the inside. He said, and there's nothing wrong with going into the hammam. You know, you know what the hammam is? What is the hammam? He said, the, it's the bathroom. But back in those days, hammam, it was the sauna, like, or, you know, where they would go and, like, have a steam shower. They would actually go into that place, and, and there would be, like, a boiling water, and it's just steam. And there'll be like people who just come, you pay them a few bucks and they, they scrub your back and they scrub. But he said, but a person should never show their aura and should always maintain their, their, um, yani their nadafa in there. Yani do what they can to, to, to protect their aura. He said, well, no, Athani is that when Izalat al Fadala, Ajza, Izalat al Fadalat, Ajza, Tuhdaf, Mithil Kasa Sharib. وَنَتْفِ الْإِبْطِ وَحَلْقِ الْعَانَ وَقَصُّ الْأَضَافِرِ وَيُكْرَهُ نَتْفِ الشَّيْبِ وَيُسْتَحَبُّ خِضَابُهُ Right? And then he's talking about the second is what's outside. Right? So now we're gargling, we're cleaning our mouths, we're brushing our teeth, we're blowing our nose, we're making sure our hair is clean. He said, what about the, the things that are cut, like the hair, right, from the private and from the underarms and, you know, the, the nails when they're too long. Person should always maintain that. Always maintain that. There's no, there's no question like, oh, well, uh, why don't you cut your nails? Why don't you, yeah, go put some oud on. You, you smell, you don't smell good, right? Yeah, you know, your thobe, uh, it, it has a smell. You, you've been wearing it so much that, it, like, yeah, 
leave me, I'm with Allah. No, no, ya Habibi, you're, I can't even have khushu' next to you. You're not with Allah. You're making me not be with Allah, <laughs> right? That's not the right way. So there's a, there's a balance, right? There's a balance. And, and that balance is uh, basically what we're trying to say is the excessive care about something that's not as important, right? Like imagine someone, and your, your house is being, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's thieves in the house. And instead of going to rush for your weapon to defend yourself and your house and your home, you're rushing to what? To the bathroom, make sure it's clean. Right? Or to put away the groceries. It's like, well, I mean, no, I have to put away the groceries. That's important. You know, I mean, it's important, but it's not what's really important at the time. And likewise is the person that excessively cares about the outside and neglects the inside. I mean, you have shaitan attacking the heart left and right. Person's losing. The battle is shaitan. Subhanallah. And what, where do we care? We care about the outside. We, so we need to make a shift. Then he said, Faslun fi fadail as salah. Now we shifted from what? From tahara to what? Salah. Ya Allah. And I want you guys to imagine this. Just so you know what salah, what salah is. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It was يعني, about, we'll say 14, about 1410 years ago or so. It was uh, a quiet Salat al Fajr. Imagine how Salat al Fajr was in Medina, in Al Masjid al Nabawi. In the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, how peaceful do you think it was? With all the justice that he had, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. With the beauty of praying behind him. With al Madina, the safe and secure. When the Khalifa, who ruled a land, who was, who was the ruler of an empire the size of Roman Persia, he would go and sleep under a tree with no guards. Radiallahu anhu. Imagine that peace, that tranquility, imagine going to Salat al-Fajr. He goes to Salat al-Fajr, they make iqama, he says, Allahu Akbar, he begins to pray. And that day, a man who was not Muslim and the only non-Muslim in Medina by the name of Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi, alayhi min Allah ma yastahak. This man decided to poison his dagger for days and to sharpen it. And then he planned to assassinate Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar ibn al-Khattab He cut between the rows and then he got to Umar You're wondering, how is somebody just going to cut between the rows like that? Jama'ah, because they're in Salah. It's not, it's not our salah, it's some other salah. We'll, we're going to talk about it now. They were in salah. They went and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was stabbed as he was reciting. He was reciting Quran. And he was stabbed once, and then twice, and then three times. From the back, about seven times. From the front, about ten times. From the side, he said a total of 17 times, imagine. And he continued to recite Qur'an. And the Sahaba did not even notice from their khushu' that this was happening in front of them. The only thing that woke them up was when he stopped reciting the Qur'an. He stopped and they're waiting and they're waiting. What happened? It cut their khushu' off now. Now they started to look and they see Umar radiallahu an falling and a man running away. So what happens? The sahaba that were walking into salah, they caught, they tried to catch Abu Lu'la and he stabbed many of them on his way out to run and they eventually caught him. They caught him. 
and they took care of it. But this is not what I'm talking about. Umar radiallahu anhu, before falling down, he was still bleeding. He pulled Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, who was behind him, and to continue salah, and Abdul Rahman continued. And the Sahaba who weren't praying, who were walking in, they carried Umar to his house. They put him on his bed. They gave him water. And they said everything, they, every time they gave him water, they would see it leak out of his body. It would be coming out. They were sure that he was dead. They tested his pulse. They, see, they, they checked his heart, his pulse. And it was so faint that they thought, خلاص, he died. Abdul Rahman bin Auf completed his salah, and the Sahaba behind him completed their salah until they did taslim. When they finished, Abdul Rahman bin Auf went. And then he saw the family of Umar standing outside, and they said, he passed away. We think he passed away. He was stabbed 17 times and he continued salah. Can, can you imagine this? Okay. And then he walked in and Abdul Rahman said, Look, there's one thing I can tell him. Let me just go in and tell him one thing. If he is not responsive, that means he's dead. We could pronounce him dead. But before I do this, we cannot pronounce him dead. So he walks in, and Abdul Rahman goes to the ears of Umar, and he says, As-salat as ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. As-salat as ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. It's salat ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. And Umar radiallahu anhu, with every ounce of energy that he had left in his body, he said, Ahadarat as-salat. He said, is it time for salat? And then they said, he said, لا يا أمير المؤمنين. Then he said, لا حظ في الإسلام لمن ترك الصلاة. He said, والله, there's nothing in Islam, there's nothing from Islam in the person who leaves Salah. <coughs> he said, there's nothing from Islam in the person that leaves Salah. This is what Salah was. This is what it used to be. Salah is... There's a ruh and there's a jasad. There's people that are obedient with their salah and there are people that are offensive with their salah. Ya Allah, how can I be offensive? Ya jama'ah, does anyone like pets? Who likes, who likes uh, to have a pet? You like a cat? What kind of cat do you like? What kind, like what breed? Okay, that's good. And you like it, you think it's cute? Okay. Let's say I heard that you like this, and I come, I bring a, a, a nice expensive cage, and I put a calico cat in it, and I come to visit you in the house. And I give it to you as a gift. What's your name, Mahdi. Mahdi. I'm like, yeah, Mahdi, this is for you. You're, you're happy, you open it, but it's, it's dead. It's a dead calico cat. You said you like the cat. I mean, the fur is there, the body's there, the blood is there, the cage, everything. It's there, but it's dead. Would you be happy or sad? Be You'll be shocked, right? Be you definitely won't be happy. You'll be a little offended too. Perhaps you'll be like, why would you give me a dead cat? What did you find this roadkill and you came to give it to me? I like it a lot. When, when you say you want something from me, do you want it alive or do you want it dead? Alive. You want it alive, Yasidi. Nobody wants something dead. Especially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya jama'ah, that's why the mu'allif rahimahullah, he said that the salah has a ruh. It has a ruh, it has a soul. 
He said, وَرُوحُهَا النِّيَّةِ وَالْإِخْلَاصِ وَالْخُشُوعِ وَحُضُورُ الْقَلْبِ He said, these things are the soul of salah. If you offer salah without them, the salah is dead, hence making a person even further from Allah subhanahu Not fulfilling what Allah wanted from us in the salah. A lot of times, your jama'ah, when a person starts to leave salah, when a person is weak in their salah, man, I started missing my salahs. You know what a person has to revisit? They don't have to revisit the gym to build muscle in order to pray. They don't have to listen to these motivational videos about how to stay disciplined and, you know, Tony Robinson, I don't know who, and how, how you could just stay motivated and stay on it and never give up and be persistent with your goals. And No, 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 you don't. The reason this salah is being left, the reason this salah is being delayed is because this salah didn't have ruh in it. And perhaps because it didn't have ruh, there was no soul, it, Allah didn't put that barakah in it. <coughs> or maybe Allah made you stop because you're offending Him too much. He just doesn't want it from you. You're like, Jama'ah, this salah, like, just stop. <laughs> Imagine, yeah, Allah, it's so bad. Imagine Allah telling a person to stop. Wallahi, thalika huwa al-khusran al-mubi. Subhanallah. It is those who Allah did not want for them to purify their hearts. There are people, نعوذ بالله من أن نكون منهم. We seek refuge in Allah from being these people. Said, it is those who Allah did not want to purify their hearts. Like there are people who want to purify, but Allah doesn't want. I mean, I don't want. Ya Allah, that's how some people can be distant. But Allah brought us here today, and Allah wants khair from us. He wants us to hear this, so that we can change and rectify. So let's renew our intention right now, because the first is niyyah. Jama'ah, when a person does niyyah, I remember when I, when I go to Palestine, all the, the old men who want to pray, they always say their niyyah out loud. You know, Allahumma inni nawaitu salat al-asr muqtadiyan fi waqtiha al-hadir wa, wa khalf al-imam al-fulani, they named the imam Mustafa ibn Muhammad ibn Abdullah. You know, Mukhtari, and he named this whole long, uh, say, and he, Allahu Akbar. That's not the niyyah, Aslan. <laughs> That's intended. That's not even a sunnah, Aslan. You know, the Prophet never taught the Sahaba to say this or do this. But what is the niyyah that we're talking about? The niyyah, ya jama'ah, is, is deep. It's saying, like, okay, why am I praying this? See, the reason for salah changes from person to person. Not everybody comes for the same reason. Some people are motivated by the love of Allah. Some people are motivated by the mercy of Allah. Some people are motiva motivated by Allah's power and ability. Some people are motivated by Allah's compassion and pardoning. Some people, everyone worship, but we need to, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Everyone has something that's driving them. But the niyyah is, okay, I'm praying the salah, but what's motivating me? What is bringing me here to stand before Allah? That is the niyyah. That is the niyyah. And guys, you know, sometimes think, do I want to just tell my parents that I'm praying? Do I want to tell my friends I've been consistent? Do I want to, am I... هَلْ خَرَجْتْ مِنْ إِلْفِ الْعَادَةِ إِلَىٰ لَذَّةِ الْعِبَادَةِ Like Imam al-Sha'rawi, rahmanullah, used to say, he used to say, did we exit from the habits of, of, of customs and ha like, you know, habits, the boredness of habits to the beauty and beautiful taste of ibadah, of worship? Did we actually exit from that? And we just go on, Allahu Akbar, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, rahman rahim, maliki. Is the Qur'an falling in our heart? طيب, الإخلاص والخشوع يا جماعة, you know خشوع? He gave an example here about Abdullah ibn al-Zubayr رضي الله He knows Abdullah ibn al-Zubayr He's a great sahabi, he was actually khalifa for a certain number of years and Abdullah ibn al-Zubayr, they said when he prayed to just imagine this, in the haram birds would sit on his shoulder and his head 
Birds would sit on his shoulder and his head. They said when Hajjaj attacked Mecca, the catap- when he, they catapulted boulders, they would pass next to him so close that his thobe would shake and, and, and wave from the air of the catapult. They said he didn't move a bit. He didn't move at all. They said, كَأَنَّهُ خَشَبَةً He's like, he's like a, a wooden post that's just praying from khushu'a. One of the sahaba, they told him, we have to amputate your leg. You know what he said? He said, wait until I'm in salah. Let me get into salah. And when I'm in sujood, that's when you cut it off. He said, how he needed to get into his zone. He needed to get into his zone. Jama'ah, the zone is stronger than that binge. You know the, 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 the number that they put, the numbing agent, like, oh, let, let me numb it. Ya Allah. We see this today, ya jama'ah. This is not something, wallah, the sahaba. Today, our brothers and sisters in Gaza, we're still watching videos. You saw that little kid? Who saw the video of the little kid? They had to do a surgery. His bone is sticking out of his arm. They needed to put it back into place and, and stitch it up. And you know what he's doing? He's reciting Quran more beautiful than any imam of the haram I, I heard. You know, he's beautiful, sincere. A little kid, he's, he's 11 years old. What kind of iman is this, ya jama'ah? Is iman something disconnected? We're always talking about the sahaba. Ya jama'ah, we watch it. We see it on our feeds now. We're watching iman every day and night. But if this doesn't wake us up, what's going to wake us up? If these people are not our examples, who's our, exa- our example? So, for this is, this is yani, what... The asar of salah is, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us pure hearts. Amen. We ask Allah to purify our hearts Amen. from all diseases and all evils, from envy, from hate, from despise of believers. We ask Allah to purify our hearts from hypocrisy, or from showing off, Amen. and from ignorance. Amen. Ya Rabb, allow our hearts to be from those that behold you when they pray and they stand before you. Ya Allah, allow us to be from those who stand before you with the right of standing before you. Ya Allah, make us grateful and thankful for your guidance to us. Ya Allah, we thank you for choosing us to obey you and to worship you. Ya Allah, we ask you on this blessed day not to let this jama' and this group that sat here for this, dhik- this majlis of dhikr to leave except with their sins completely forgiven. Mm. Our ranks completely lifted. And us being written from those who are united with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon Jannah, upon Al-Nahr Al-Kawthar, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, allow us to drink from the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's hand. Ya Allah, allow us to drink from his hand. Ya Allah, unite us with our loved ones. Ya Allah, forgive our mothers and our fathers and our grandparents who preceded us with Iman. Ya Rabb, have mercy on our children and our progeny and allow them to be steadfast on Iman, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make them steadfast on Islam. Ya Allah, make our last words in this dunya, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim. Wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhir da'wan. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.